Hello, everyone. This is Dan Kelly inviting you to sit back and enjoy with me the thrilling memories of the St. Louis Blues' fabulous 1968-69 National Hockey League season. And what a season it was. The Blues' heroics during their first year had labeled them as the league's Cinderella club and the big quote Scotty Bowman and his players do for an encore. It didn't take long to find out. After an opening night loss in Chicago, the second year version of the Blues was introduced to the avid crowd at the arena. The Los Angeles Kings provided the opposition. The Blues' new additions wasted little time in making their presence felt. Former Ranger Camille the Eel Henry and ex-Pittsburgh star Ab McDonald teamed up for three goals. At the other end of the ice, a man who hadn't played in three years, goaltender Jacques Plant stopped the Kings cold. Plant's 64th career shutout made it look easy, the Blues waltzed to a 6 to nothing win. Four games later, the Blues found themselves in the Boston Garden against the rough, tough Bruins. Last year's Conn Smythe Trophy winner, Glenn Hall was in goal, and the going was a bit hectic. The Bruins still with a two-man advantage. Back on the point for Stanfield. Over to the other point to Orr, a blast, and Harvey blocked that. Orr has it at this point. Over for Stanfield at the left side, a shot. Picard stopped that one. Back to Bobby Orr. Back to Stanfield at the point. In front to Esposito, and Harvey blocked it. The rebound to Bobby Williams, and Hall stopped that one from close in. The Bruins doing everything but score. Orr at the point. Over to Stanfield. Back at the other point to Orr, a shot. They score! The Boston Bruins have just gone ahead one to nothing on a power play goal and a shot from the point by Bobby Orr. Boston's young sensation Bobby Orr had given the Bruins the lead, but the Blues were far from out of it. Keenan muscles that man out of the play, gets it to Sabrin to Harvey. Harvey can't find it, clears it over for McCreary. McCreary out to Sabrin. Sabrin right in, he scores! Gary Sabrin on a beautiful passing play. Backhands it behind Eddie Johnston to tie it at 1-1 for the St. Louis Blues. Now Harvey starting back for the Blues, leading this four-man rush to center. Passing it through to Ecclestone. Off his stick into the corner to Shock. Shock jammed out of the play, comes up with the puck, gets it back for Harvey. Harvey closing in a shot. A great save, the rebound to Shock. And McDonald, he scores! McDonald takes the rebound after the Blues had had two great scoring opportunities. McDonald's goal stood up and the Blues, behind the masterful goaltending of Mr. Goalie, became one of the few clubs to beat the Bruins in Boston Garden all season long. The score, 2-1. to one. The Blues had shown signs of becoming an excellent road club and the first days of November gave them a real chance to prove it. November 3rd, they skated into Detroit's Olympia and found themselves trailing after an early barrage from a potent Red Wing offense. Down four to one, the Blues and little Camille Henry went to work. Harvey inside his own line for the Blues. Passes to St. Marseille to Berenson at center to Ab McDonald. Down across the line, McDonald stops in the corner, back to St. Marseille. St. Marseille to Berenson, across to Henry, Henry! He's pass at the goal mouth, Crozier sprawled out, and Henry just backed up half a stride, waited an extra split second, and flipped it over. They prostrate Roger Crozier for his fifth goal of the year. St. Marseille tied up in the corner, gets it to Ab McDonald, his pass back at the point for Berenson. Berenson trying to get it back into the corner, he does, and back there to pick it up for the Detroit Red Wings, he's Kent Douglas. Berenson, that's the hit. Camille Henry takes that pass, and Camille tips in the quick pass by Berenson to narrow the Detroit lead to four to three. Now the Blues right from the faceoff. Berenson knocks it back in. Crozier had to stop it. Digging it into the corner is Harris. He lost it. Picard for the Blues. Dumps it in front, and back to get it for Detroit behind his own goal is Ron Harris. Harris lost it to Camille Henry. Henry, and he shoots. He shoots. Third of the night and the first hat trick of the season. 
Not only was that the first hat trick of the season, but the Yale had racked up the first hat trick in the Blues two-year history. St. Louis gained a big 4-4 tie with Detroit, and the road trip continued. The Blues won in Pittsburgh and moved on to Philadelphia, the Flyers, and the Spectrum. It was November 7th, and a night to remember for the Blues number seven. From the faceoff, Johnson into the corner. Picard for the Blues plays it to Ab McDonald. He couldn't get it out of there. Al Berenson catches up with him, comes across center. Berenson around Van Imp, right in on goal. He shoots, he scores! Red Berenson, a brilliant play as he moved down and went around Van Imp and scored to make it one to nothing for the St. Louis Blues. Into the corner, Roberts has it. Clears it behind his own goal for Bob Plager. On the boards for McCurry, ahead of center to Berenson. Berenson knocks it by Van Imp and has a break. Berenson right in, he shoots, he scores! Berenson, a great goal again by the Redhead. Here's Picard at center, pass for Henry. Henry, a great pass to Berenson, a shot, he scores! The hat trick for Red Berenson. Here's Camille Henry. Pass ahead to Berenson who has a breakaway at center. Berenson in, he shoots, he scores! And Berenson has four in a row in the Blues lead, four nothing. Johnson in the corner, back for Watson, and Harvey blocks that and clears it to center. And Van Imp, who has broken his stick, is back to get it, lost it to McCreary. He's in with Berenson, Berenson shoots, he scores! Berenson has scored his fifth goal, and the Blues lead five nothing. What a night for the Redheads comes up for Harvey, ahead for McCreary. Van Hip lost it to Berenson. Berenson has a break, one man back. Here he comes, a shot, he scores! Berenson has tied the record of six goals in one game. And he gets a great ovation from this crowd at the Philadelphia Spectrum. Six goals in one hockey game, tying the record. The Red Barons' super effort shattered two league marks and tied two others. The Blues had demonstrated that they could score and play defense. And in Boston, Bob Plager demonstrated that they knew what to do when the going got rough. Craig Cameron is back on. Now the Bobby Orr and Craig Cameron are ready to do some pushing. Teddy Green piles in and knocks Cameron down. They all start to push. Bob Plager came in. He wants to get at Bobby Orr. He swings the stick at Green. Teddy Green and Bob Plager win six at each other. Now they drop the six. They're ready to do battle. Bob Plager and Teddy Green, two of the tough guys in the National Hockey League. They stand there. The linesman let them go to it. Green lands to the left. So does Plager. Now Plager flails away at the right hand. He gets Green's sweater over his head. Bob Plager flailing away. Green gets the left hand loose. Now Esposito comes into the scene with Fred Cameron. Everybody is paired off. And finally, Teddy Green. The Blues tied that one with the Bruins, 1-1, and began a string of 12 in a row without a loss. New York, Detroit, Minnesota, and Oakland failed to beat the Blues, and the high-scoring Blackhawks were next. Bill McCreary's goal gave the Blues a 1-0 lead, going into the game's closing minute at the arena. Now Makita for Chicago, drops it to Warham, his pass to Bobby Hull, who streaks in across that line. Less than a minute to play. Bob Plager for the Blues, couldn't get it out. McCreary has it, clears it on the boards. Here's Makita, trying to center it to Howie Young. A shot, oh, and Hull deflected it just wide. The Chicago net is empty, Warham's shot is wide. The Hawks have six attackers. Here's Sableton at the point, into the corner to Makita. Makita gets it to Pappen at the side of the net. McCreary takes it into the corner. There's it off the board for shot. He shoots it down the ice with 30 seconds to go. Stapleton back to get it, and there's no icing call. Now Stapleton, a pass on the wing. Talbot breaks it up. The Chicago net is empty. Talbot takes the shot, and it's wide of the net. 18 seconds left. Stapleton trying to clear it to Pappen. He comes to center. Here's Jimmy Roberts taking a shot, and Stapleton deflected it wide. Eight seconds left. Stapleton inside his own line. Talbot stopped it. Gets it to Chris. To Talbot. Talbot moving in. He shoots. Oh, and he missed the empty net. The game is over. Oh, the game is over. And the St. Louis Blues behind an almost unbelievable goaltending performance from Jacques Watt and a great effort from every player on the hockey team to beat the Chicago Blackhawks one to nothing. Jacques Plante kicked out 44 shots in that encounter to pick up his third shutout of the season. 
Jimmy Roberts and Red Berenson took turns scoring two goals in a game to keep the Blues streak alive, and then the spotlight was on Glenn Hall. Hale for Philadelphia clears it to LaCroix at center. His long shot kicked out by Hall. Into the corner, Roberts had it, lost it to LaCroix, center to Nolan, a shot, and a save by Hall. The rebound, a drive by Shendra, and Hall stopped that. Another shot by Nole, and Glenn Hall blocked it. The Blues starting to come back now after three great stops by Hall. Barkley Flinger lost the puck to Selby, but Picard was there to cover up. Now the Flyers trying to move in. Sarazaz tied up by Barkley Flinger, who clears it around the boards. And the Blues come back. Saverin, the net is empty. There's Saverin moving in on an empty net. A shot. He missed the net. He moves right in. Now Camille Henry. His shot is deflected by Saverin, and Mizek stopped that. 13 seconds left. The Flyer goal is empty. Mizek has it behind his own net, trying to clear it out. He does the center. Picard for the Blues. Shoots it back in. Three seconds. It's into the corner. Mizek has it. Got it to Kennedy, and the game is over. The Blues took it one to nothing. The Red Barons' 14th goal of the season and Mr. Goalie's second shutout soared the Blues to a commanding 11-point lead in the West Division race. Bobby Hull, Stan Makita and company had a 3-1 lead in the next encounter as the Blues fought to keep their unbeaten streak alive. We're midway through the final period at the arena. Here's Picard at center from the faceoff across the Chicago line. A shot. The rebound to Henry in front. Picard! And he couldn't get a shot away. Henry gets it back to... Harvey to Berenson, back for Harvey. Harvey, a shot, and Dryden made the save. Henry after the rebound, a backhand shot. Here's McDonald, shoots, he scores! Big Ab McDonald scores! After the Blues that had several chances to score, McDonald finally got it into the bottom right-hand corner with a rod in the penalty box, and that cuts Chicago's lead to 3-2. to two. Harvey, for the Blues, leads this rush to his own line. Harvey comes to center, down across the line. Marat broke it up, knocks Harvey down. Sabrin has the puck, gives it to St. Marseille to Sabrin. In across the line, Sabrin's shot is blocked. Sabrin has it again, a drive, he scores! The Blues had done it again. Two games later, back-to-back -back ties with the Flyers and Penguins made it an even dozen without a loss. Just when it appeared that the Blues could do no wrong, everything went wrong. Veterans Doug Harvey and Jock Plant were injured, and St. Louis dropped three games in a row in East Division cities. With their league lead shaved to six points, the Blues fought back. Jock Plant returned and blanked Oakland one to nothing. After a long trip home from the West Coast appearance, it was a weary Blues team that trailed the rampaging New York Rangers 2-1 with just 15 seconds remaining in the game. They have Picard stationed right off the edge of the face-off circle, which is to the left of Jackman. Berenson, now Boom Boom Jeffrey sends Rattel out there, calls Arnie Brown over to the bench to talk to him. Berenson will try and get it for Picard, who is the trigger man on this ganging attack. Berenson gets it to Picard, a shot, a save, the rebound! Berenson scores! Red Berenson has tied it up with 12 seconds to go, and the arena is in a bedlam! That come from behind tie swelled the Blues' West Division lead to 10 points, and St. Louis was on the move again. The Blues ran their unbeaten streak on home ice to 11 games, before dropping a December 28th decision to Boston. The zero heroes of Plot and Hall clinched first half Vesna Trophy honors, combining for eight shutouts and a rock bottom 2.11 goals against average. Glenn picked up his fourth whitewash and the pair's ninth just one game into the season's second half before St. Louis dropped a 3-1 loss in Chicago. It was the Blues' turn to do the honors when the Blackhawks returned to St. Louis on the weekend. Ron Schock and Bill McCreary provided the early fireworks. Schock for the Blues to center ice, down across the line. Schock to McCreary, a shot! He scores! Billy McCreary! Shock to 
McCreary in across the line. McCreary, a shot, and DeJordy made the save. Picard a drive. Cameron tipped it, but DeJordy got his leg on it. McCreary at the side of the net. The shot. They score! One shot to make it two to nothing. Set up by Billy McCreary from behind the net. And the Blues jump into an early 2 nothing lead. And the crowd again goes wild. Harvey there to get it. Passes to McCreary. And across the line to Shock. Ron Shock a drive. He scores! Shock beating to Shorty on the short side to make it 3 to nothing for the Blues. The Blues went on to blast Chicago 6-1 in perhaps their greatest effort of the year. As January came to a close, Scotty Bowman's club continued to dominate the West Division. The Blues carried a 17-point lead into Pittsburgh, plus a string of 18 games against division foes without a loss. The Penguins had been tough all year long, and with the score 1-1 in the final period, it was still anybody's hockey game. Shock on the faceoff, lost the draw to Burns, Burns third it, but Picard holds it in, Picard shot, just missed, the backhand shot by Shock, hit the defense, Shock in the corner trying to center it out, Picard is there too, goes to Jimmy Roberts, Roberts takes the pass to Henry, Henry back to Roberts, the net is empty, a shot, Shock takes the shot, he scores, Ron Shock as Binkley was out of position at the other side of the goal crease, and the Blues go ahead, two to one, Scoring with the Penguins playing two men short. That was the final, two to one. The Blues brought their monopoly to 19 in a row without a loss to West Division teams and returned home to meet the Rangers. The West Division leaders were trailing by one goal and were shorthanded when the Red Baron showed the jam-packed arena crowd just how it should be done. Picard knocks Rattel down and McCreary comes up with the puck. McCreary to Berenson. In across the line. Berenson in on goal. He shoots. He scores! Red Berenson. A beautiful move. As he took Billy McCreary's pass. Walked around Rod Gilbert. Walked right in on goal. And beat Ed Jackman as he pulled him out. To tie it at 2-2. While the Blues were playing a man short. St. Louis eventually succumbed to the Rangers 4-3. But Berenson's goal was perhaps the picture move of the year. In February, key games against the tough East clubs gave the Blues added momentum in their drive towards the Clarence S. Campbell Bowl. Glenn Hall blanked the Red Wings in Detroit. Captain Al Arbor provided the winner against Toronto. And the Blues ganged up to stop Red Hot Boston. A 4-4 tie with Montreal, just when it appeared that the Blues had finally broken that Canadian jinx, nevertheless, added a big point to the Blues' league-leading margin. With their Western unbeaten streak ended at 19 in a row earlier in the month, the Blues began to run through their division mates once more. Glenn Hall, who had put their goaltending duo just one shy of a league record, was in goal against the North Stars when strange things began to happen. Berenson goes down, and the fans are hollering, and they're going to get a penalty. Glenn Hall comes out of his own net, picks up the puck at center, gets it ahead to Terry Fitz. delayed penalty from the goal as he was the puck come out to the St. Louis blue line. Glenn picked it up. He did not go to the bench to be replaced. He laid a beautiful pass over to Terry Crisp who was streaking in on the Minnesota blue line. Crisp walked in all alone. Had a beautiful 14 inch shot though. 14 inches off the ice that hit the lower left hand corner behind Bowman. So Glenn Hall gets an assist. Not only did Mr. Goalie pick up an assist in perhaps one of hockey's most unusual plays, but he grabbed a league-leading eighth shutout and registered the team's 13th of the year, tying a league record. Three nights later, the Red Hot Blues, 23 points in first place, clinched a playoff spot with a win over the Flyers. Seven games later, they returned home to capture the West Division title by eliminating second-place Oakland 5-2. The Blues had clearly proven their superiority in their division. At the season's end, they boasted of the league's best goaltending and Vesna Trophy winners, Plant and Hall, the division's top scorer in Red Berenson, 
and the West's premier defenseman in Al Arbor. The Blues, drawing the fast-finishing Flyers in the opening round of the playoffs, quickly proved that the postseason activities were to be no different. Goaltender Jacques Plunt, forced to play all but 10 minutes of the first game due to an injury to Glenn Hall, was magnificent. Jake had posted two shutouts, the Blues had swept the first three games, and the Flyers were clinging to the ropes in game number four. Keenan giving it over to Chris from the right side. Kristen over the blue line gets a shot on goal. Tearing in for the rebound is Keenan. Right in front. Chris shoots. He scores! Harry Chris combining with Larry Keenan as they were playing five men aside and putting St. Louis into the lead two to nothing. Now Roberts has it at the point of drive. He scores! Jimmy Roberts with a drive from the right point. Just a foot inside the blue line, let one go waist high, and scored. And St. Louis is into a 3 0 lead. And we've only played four minutes and 22 seconds. That was the knockout punch, the final score, 4 1, and the Blues had raced through the Flyers in four straight. The Los Angeles Kings, upset winners in a tough seven game series with Oakland, were next and the Red Baron gave a quick indication how the series would wind up. We're in the second period of the first game at the arena. Bob Plager holds it in, gets it to Berenson. Back for Bob Plager to Henry at the side of the net. Camille Henry to Berenson. He scores! Red Berenson set up beautifully by Camille Henry after Bob Plager had made another good play at the left point. Keenan has the puck behind the net. Gives it to Berenson, and Berenson starts out of a zone zone. Blues have the man advantage. Berenson across the line, slap shot, another hey! shot. He scores! The Red Baron scoring to make it 3 to nothing for the Blues. And again, this crowd at the arena in St. Louis are up. Chris checked him. Chris clearing it on the boards up the center, races after it himself. In across the line, Chris, a pass to Berenson. He scores! Red Berenson gets the hat trick. And the Blues go ahead. Four to nothing. On a fine play by Terry Chris as he set up a speeding Red Baron who cut in front of that net and just deflected Chris's goal mouth pass in behind Jerry Desjardins. And again, the crowd stands and sings. Red's hat trick all in one period tied an NHL Stanley Cup record. Jacques Plante was too much for Los Angeles, and the Blues went one up, four to nothing. Two nights later, it looked like the Kings might pull a surprise as they fought back from a two nothing deficit to tie up the contest, but once more the Blues showed their superiority. White shoots at the center ice, Talbot has it there for the Blues. Talbot for St. Louis, carrying back in across the line to Berenson, Berenson, slap shot! Hey. Quickly, it's right to save! Go ahead, three to two. Listen to this crowd. It continued to be all St. Louis in the final two games on the coast. The Blues successfully defended their division playoff championship, sweeping their rivals in an amazing eight straight games. Scotty Bowman and his team were now faced with preparing for the tough task of meeting the winner of the Boston Montreal series in the Stanley Cup final. Both East Division teams had excellent records through the regular season, and either one would be heavy favorites over the Blues in the finals. Montreal held a 3-2 series edge, with the sixth game in Boston going into a second overtime and sudden death. Here's Bob Wilson, the voice of the Boston Bruins, with that game's closing moments. Oh, Esposito controls the draw to Hodge. He puts it behind the net for Green in the Boston zone. Green coming out on the left wing. Drops it in front of the crease for Ori. Ori off the left side. Gives it away to Provo. Provo steps around Ori. In front of Bellavo. Bellavo shot. Goal! The game is over. Boston's out of it. John Bellavo wins the series for Montreal in the second overtime. And the crowd is stunned. Once more, it would be the St. Louis Blues and the Montreal Canadiens in the Stanley Cup Finals. Even though the Blues had yet to take a decision for Montreal in two years of competition, the classy Canadians clearly indicated that they were not about to take this series lightly. The object 
was their 16th Stanley Cup win, and the Habs were out to take it. The Blues and Jacques Plante fell victims 3-1 to one in the first encounter at the Forum, and two days later, with Glenn Hall in goal, it was more of the same. Now it's back on the point to Savard from the face-off. Into the corner for Beliveau. Beliveau stick handles. Closes in for a shot. It hit Flager and deflected wide. Duff in the corner. Out for Cournoyer. Back for Duff. Cournoyer back on the point to Savard. For Beliveau. Beliveau in front to Duff. He shoots. He scores! Next stop. Made no mistake. Set up beautifully in front of the net. And he shot it high into the top right-hand corner. As the Canadians threw that puck around beautifully, the Perrier, Savard, Duff, Delavo, and Cournoyer handling it like they had it on a string. Yes, the Canadians were magnificent. They took the first two games by identical scores, and the scene shifted to the St. Louis arena. But it would be no different there. In the next meeting, the Habs' young goaltender, Rogosian Vasha, stole the show. The tiny Frenchman gave the partisan crowd the largest ever to watch a game in the arena, 16,338, little to cheer about while his mates were going to work at the other end. Defenseman Serge Savard, later to be named the year's Conn Smythe Trophy winner as the outstanding player in the playoffs, showed why he was to achieve that honor. And Savard has it for Montreal. Serge Savard comes to center and across the line, the slap shot, he scores! Serge Savard! Let's go a bullet like slap shot into the bottom right hand corner and the Canadians go ahead one to nothing. The final score would be four to nothing and the West champions were within one game of being eliminated. But the Blues, as they had done all year long, weren't going down without a fight. They roared back and Terry Gray gave the loyal standing room only crowd its moment in the next game. Savard getting it up ahead to Redmond. Redmond trying to get it to Richard. It bounces on the boards. St. Marseille picks it up, trying to get it out, but not so far. Now he's got it out in the center ice area to Terry Crisp. He's taken into the boards by Redmond and Savard. Here's St. Marseille in over the line with him is Terry Gray. They score! The Blues! Gray's goal, making it one to nothing, gave the Blues their first and only lead in the series. Despite a spirited effort by the entire St. Louis team, Spurred on by a never-say-die crowd, the Canadians showed why they are the winningest team in hockey. They overcame that goal and went on to win the game 2-1 and their 16th Stanley Cup title. And the Fighting Blues will have to wait one more year to end that Montreal jinx. But 1968-69 was truly a year to remember. A year in which 643,163 loyal fans watched as their club tied or established over a half a dozen NHL records, walked away with regular season honors by a commanding 19 points, repeated as West Division playoff champions in an eight-game sweep, and for the second straight year in as many seasons became Stanley Cup finalists. It was a year in which heroes were built and traditions formed. And it will all start again next season at the arena when once again the Blues come marching in. <laughs>